Hey guys, what's up? Bill Scorda Florida Bass Paddler, and tonight I'm going to be installing a rudder on my Old Town Topwater 120. So I decided to try to do this with some video. This way there's some uh, reference materials out there on YouTube. So I'm doing this live. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit at a time. Uh, if I find any ways to do things a little easier than what I just did, I will go ahead and pass that on in the tutorial. But Stay tuned. Uh, now when you get the rudder kit for this kayak, you're going to get color instructions as well as a parts list, the whole nine yards. So what I did is I went through the first couple steps and the first thing I did is on both sides I removed the foot braces as well as the, um, the rails that they were on. Now this would be a good time to clean underneath there to get any sediment or residue that's been under there from normal use to make sure the surface is nice and clean. Each foot rail has three screws, which you want to set aside and make sure you don't misplace them because you're going to need them later on in the steps. The second thing we had to do is drill, excuse me, mark two holes here. This is where the tubing is going to go for the rudder lines. This will be lined up with the new foot rails. So what I do is I took a black sharpie, lined it up, and I marked my two spots. One there, as well as one there. In addition to doing that, you're also going to have to put two marks back here. I'm not sure if you can see them. I'm even wearing a headlight, but there's one there and one there. This is where the tubing for the rudder lines is going to feed out of the rear of the kayak. Now, one of the scariest steps of this, you want to make sure you do it right, is on the last page of the instructions, you're going to have to have this template. Now, if you have an Old Town Topwater 106 or 120, you probably have a dimple in the material uh, from the mold. That dimple is to help you center this template if you decide to put a rudder on your kayak. Now as you can see, I use my finger to push down onto the dimple and there's a little X. You kind of want to get that as close to the center of the dimple as possible because we're going to trace this and then we're going to have to cut this bad boy out. And that's a really big hole. So you want to make sure you're using the template. Do not use the outer edge of the rear hatch or you're going to have a giant hole in the rear of your kayak that the hatch will not be able to attach to. Please use the template. Or you can use possibly a protractor or something along those lines, but I would recommend using the template. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to trace this out, we're going to start drilling our holes. Now before we cut this area out, I want to show you, as per the instructions, we've made a half inch pilot hole here for your jigsaw or whatever tool you're going to use to cut this out. So again, as you can see, we made a half inch hole here and this is going to help us start to cut around the edge of where we traced. That is a big hole. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take a moment, we're going to get the vacuum out, we're going to clean up all this residue from the, uh, the cutting of the hole and then we're going to start running our tubing. Man, that's scary. Let's get this cleaned up. You see how I'm holding this with the curvature pointing towards the inner wall. You want to feed it in that way. If you feed it in this way, all the tubing is going to do is curl around the inside of the hole and not pass down through the rear where you need it. So feed it through this way, nice and slow, and it'll go all the way to the end. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to show you how to attach it to the front. Alright guys, I'm hoping you can see this next part, because this is the tricky part. Here's the edge of the tubing that's going to catch the inside of the cockpit. What we're going to do is we're going to melt it. I'm using a uh, big multi-purpose barbecue lighter. You can use a propane torch, cigarette lighter, whatever you desire. I kind of use this because it's kind of a little bit safer to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat that end up really good. So it looks like she's about to drip. I'm going to blow on it. I'm going to take a rivet. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to press that rivet against the end once it's, uh, once it's been softened up to form. And I'm going to show you why we do that. Now this rivet is included in the kit that Old Town gives you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. And now we're going to pull that rivet out. And as you see, we have a little uh, nice little flat edge here. This is going to catch so the tubing does not get pulled inside of the kayak. 
So now we're going to feed this all the way the rest of the way through and this will catch and I'll give you a, an idea of what that looks like. So I hope you can see that okay. There's our tubing right there. Again, this is the quarter inch hole that we drilled into the uh, inside of the cockpit. You don't want to make the hole too big because that will allow water to get in as well as have the tubing get pulled into the kayak. We're going to have to pull it nice and tight in the stern of the kayak. So that rim we made with the rivet allows it to catch and act almost like a, a washer, if you will, to kind of keep it nice and flush. This is where the uh, cables are going to go from the foot braces, which will allow it to run through the inside of the uh, kayak. So that's what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and do the rear now. Okay, we got the rear ones done. So the tricky part was you had to pull these taut from the inside of the kayak. Then pull another half inch out, trim the excess, take the lighter or propane torch. This is where I prefer the lighter because the propane torch may burn around your kayak. You want to be careful with that. So use the lighter, form the lip around the edge of the hole there, and then allow it to release itself and go back inside. This way it's nice and taut on the inside but it's not over tight where it's pulling against the uh, tubing on the outer edge so these are done as well as the other ones now so our channels for the rudder lines are ready to go so i'm kind of hoping you could see this uh, this is where there was a vinyl screw on the side of the kayak and when you got it you'll have seen there's like an indentation uh, almost looks like a hamburger if you will with the two buns and then the, the patty right there i know that seems silly but kind of what it looks like and that will help you determine as to where to set what's called the rudder park. The rudder park is the guides that the line feeds through to move the rudder up and down. Um, there are five of these, three on the side, two up on the top of the stern near where the rudder is actually parked itself. Um, there are vinyl screws that come out. Use a one inch self tapping screw to put the rudder park in. I'm going to be putting this one in in a moment. But as you can see, here's one down here. It's already in. The one inch self tapping screw. Again, there's going to be five of them. So you're going to have one up here near your side handle. There'll be one here. There's one here. And then two more. And again, all of them have indentations to let you know exactly how to position them on the kayak. In addition, there are two more vinyl screws that came out here and here, which we put these clips here. And what these are for, this will be a piece of bungee that will help keep the rudder in place during storage as well as transportation. There are also four vinyl screws here in the rear. Those come out. There's threaded inserts there. I we'll use the included screws to help put the bracket on for your rudder. So, so far this has been a really easy process. And Old Town has done an exceptional job with the parts, explaining how things get done, the color diagrams, as well as the step-by-step -step instructions on installing this. So we're going to go ahead and put the last uh, rudder park guide on and then we're going to start putting the blade assembly on. Okay, so now we're putting the hatch on. Uh, what you can do is line up your hatch and they want the top hole or any of the holes lined up with the slot for the rudder. So what I did was I went ahead and drilled two holes with this in place, securely tightened my top and bottom screws. On the inside there's a neoprene washer as well as a nylon locking nut. So now that these are nice in place and this will hold uh, right where it needs to be, I'm going to go ahead and drill the other four holes and install the other screws and our hatch will be done and in place. Once that's done, we'll no longer have to access the inside of the kayak, so we'll go ahead and close her up. All right, so as you can see, the hatch has been installed. Uh, it went on relatively easily. Um, the only tricky part was to get your hand inside at an angle to get that neoprene washer on there as well as the uh, nylon locking nut. A uh, piece of advice I could tell you is don't put the screw all the way in. Uh, screw it into the stern of the kayak just enough to get that neoprene washer on there and have just as much sticking out to get the nylon locking nut on there. And then go ahead and get your socket on the inside to hold that nut in place. And then go ahead and continue to tighten the screws. Uh, Careful not to over tighten, but you want it tight enough to keep that hatch nice and flush against the uh, stern of the kayak so water doesn't get in there. So now our hatch is all done. 
All right, so our foot braces are into the slides. Um, now, one of the most important things to remember when you get these instructions is up here, see it right here, bungee's gonna run around a spacer. So when you put um, these foot siding rails back on, please make sure you have this spacer on there. Don't skip that part in the instructions. Make sure you read them thoroughly. A spacer prevents this uh, brace from coming all the way out. In addition, the cables have been run. Now, you're supposed to come through here around the screw and back out. Uh, one shortcut I took is I found it easier to make my loop here, come back out, get the wire cable through the crimps, don't crimp it yet, and then I put my screw in. Uh, once I got the screw in, I tightened up on the wire, and I went ahead and attached my crimps and my heat shrink tubing. So that's one little shortcut I took. But everything else has followed suit very nicely. Rudder's also in place. We've got the wires connected here. Uh, one of the things I like about this rudder, I have installed a different couple types of rudders in my day with different kayaks, are these adjustment screws. Really allows you to make uh, micro adjustments to the cable line to make sure everything lines up nice and straight. So really nice job from Old Town uh, having that uh, ability to do so on the uh, rudder. So last part we're going to do now is run the cable line and then we should be ready to go. Alright, so we are done. Uh, the rudder line has been attached. Um, a couple key things to remember. Number one, when you're running the line through the rudder blade, follow the instructions. They're very clear on how the lines are supposed to run. And when you come through from the underneath, make sure the lines don't cross each other. Keep them nice and straight. This way they don't add any unnecessary tension. Number two, probably the most difficult part was the double fisherman's knot here. The top one's supposed to be about two inches from the rudder guide, the bottom one about eight inches. Uh, this way there's plenty of clearance for when you're putting the rudder up and down. Uh, it took me a little bit uh, to figure out those knots, but uh, I did get it done. Uh, I did leave a little bit of a tab on each one. I did cut some of the excess off and burn the edges so they don't fray. In addition, one of the last steps is to also put on your rudder bungee here. Again, we talked about it earlier with these clips here. This uh, will help keep the bungee, uh, excuse me, the rudder in place during transport or during storage. Now, keep in mind, when you put your bungee line on here, you want to make sure you have enough to get around the bungee. Don't go too tight or you won't be able to pull it on your bungee or you may accidentally damage one of these. So make sure you have, it's nice and tight. And I'm doing it with one hand because I'm holding the camera. So the rudder doesn't move around too much during transport. Uh, the one you get is orange. Uh, I changed out all of my bungees to black just because I, I like the color black more than orange. Um, really happy with the instructions that Old Town gave you. Uh, it was very easy to do if you follow the instructions. I only had a couple hiccups, uh, but that's just the way I do things. Um, probably took me about three hours to get this job done. Um, it's really going to add a nice stability to the kayak as far as tracking, uh, especially in windy areas. So if you have a top water 120 and you love the way she is, I would recommend putting the rudder on there because it will really help her track straight in windy conditions. Uh, I will be doing a video review of this kayak very soon. I have to tell you it's become one of my favorite kayaks to use. Uh, really enjoying it. So now that we got a rudder on there, we're going to do a couple other upgrades on there so I can go over them in the video review and then we'll uh, go catch some bass. So I'm Bill Score of Florida Bass Paddler. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them below. I'll try to answer them. Uh, again, it's a very easy process. Old Town did a great job with the colored instructions. So I hope you were able to reference some materials here from this video. If you like what you see, subscribe. Thanks for watching and tight lines everybody. I'll see you guys on the water.